This segment of Delmarva Life is brought to you by Peninsula Regional Medical Center. When someone you love takes their own life, it is absolutely devastating. You wonder what you could have said, what maybe you could have done to save them. And you know, a lot of times something like suicide isn't even talked about really until it happens to someone famous. In fact, just yesterday, it was announced that the Everybody Loves Raymond star Sawyer Sweeten on the right has unexpectedly died from a suspected suicide. He was only 19. He took his own life while visiting family in Texas. Disney Channel actor and Rizzoli and Isles star Lee Thompson Young took his own life in August of 2013 at the age of 29. Almost two months after the incident, it was revealed that he had a history with bipolar disorder. The coroner released that at the time, Young was taking medication for the condition and that he also suffered with depression. And of course, the shocking news of Robin Williams' suicide back in August of last year. Comedian Robin Williams found dead in his California home August 11th from what investigators suspect was a suicide by hanging. He was 63 years old. According to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, in 2013, there were just over 41,000 suicides reported in the U.S., making suicide the 10th leading cause of death for Americans. In that year, someone in the country died by suicide about every 13 minutes. And it's not just young people. As a matter of fact, the highest suicide rate for every 100,000 people was more than 19 people aged 45 to 64 years old. Just after that, those 85 years and older, that rate was more than 18 per 100,000. The younger groups have had consistently lower suicide rates. In 2013, young people ages 15 to 24 had a suicide rate of more than 10. For many years, the suicide rate has been about four times higher among men than among women. In 2013, men had a suicide rate of more than 20, and women had a rate of higher than five. And of those who died by suicide in 2013, more than 77% were men, while just over 22% were women. Now, fortunately, although suicide is impacting far too many people every year, there may be some signs you can look for so that it doesn't happen to someone that you love. Joining us today to help us learn that is Thais Masengwa, who is the Clinical Manager of Behavioral Health with Peninsula Regional Medical Center. Thais, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Let me ask you this. Is, is there a particular time of year that this seems more prevalent? Yeah, studies show that uh, between the months of April and May, mm -hmm. spring into the summer, we see spikes in suicide rates. However, during the holidays, Christmas and Thanksgiving, that's when, for especially for the older generation, 65 and older, right. we, see some, we see some of the spikes during that time. You mentioned May, why now? Yeah, it's difficult to predict or to say that they, they are not, we don't have comprehensive studies showing why, but some of the studies show that probably because of the genesis, you know, the life is starting to happen, plants right. are growing, uh, people are going outside, but if you have a, 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 a condition that makes you stay at home, you are not able to go outside, P possibly you have uh, chronic pain, you are dealing with debilitating mm -hmm. disease, right. uh, and you are not able to go out there and join other people, that may be the cause for a spike during those time periods, at least studies show that. So can, can seasonal blues come into this too? Seasonal blues are definitely correlated with some su suicide spikes, uh, especially Thanksgiving and Christmas, like I said earlier. If you are elderly and you are alone at home, but you are used to being surrounded by people, all right. of a sudden the, the spouse has died five years earlier and you have no one to celebrate with, that could uh, increase their suicidal tendencies during those times. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about something I've been reading about called cluster suicides. It seems to be prevalent among teens. What is that? Cluster suicide is basically when teens are encouraging each other to, ki to kill themselves, probably ba due to the reason that somebody who they idolized may have died in that manner. A good example is a, a boy band that is based in London. It's mm -hmm. called One Direction. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's one, one, one of the five members that announced in March that he was leaving the band. His name, his name is Zayn Malik. Mm -hmm. And Twitter, was getting about 4,600 tweets per minute. Some of the tweets were, were encouraging each other to commit suicide. Oh. 
Over him leaving the band. Over him leaving the band. Mm -hmm. And the teenagers feel, especially young girls, feel that they have this impending doom. They feel betrayed, disappointed. You know, the band that they so love will most likely disintegrate. And this is some of the feelings they have. Wow, and for goodness. that reason, they may commit suicide. Okay, so uh, is there anything that we can look for that might be an indicator to us that this could be a problem? Yeah, some of the signs are being reclusive. If you see a teenager is reclusive, they're not going outside, right. uh, they're not engaging with friends, they, they don't want to wake up in the morning, they don't want to stay in bed all the time, yeah. they don't want to go to school. Those are some of the signs and symptoms that you, we could look for. Giving away their valuable things? Giving away their available things. Uh, selling things that they value, right. uh, not wanting to participate in any vacation trips, not wanting yeah. to play sports anymore, being glued to uh, maybe their computer, and not wanting to inter I interact with anybody else. Yeah. If uh, a teen has suicidal tendencies, is that something that they can grow out of? Uh, it's possible that somebody can grow out of that, yes. Uh, in some instances, it's just a matter of being suicidal for a day or for a week and it mm -hmm. goes away. Mm -hmm. But if it is a clinical condition, then it has to be managed by uh, pharmacotherapy or psychotherapy, which means medications or counseling. Right. Uh, and some of the causes for suicide, even though it's not quite understood in terms of research, but there could be predisposition factors that could push somebody over the edge. It could be genetics, it could be biological factors or environmental right. factors, a loss of a parent, yeah. a loss of a friend, or having been exposed to a tragic event could cause somebody to want to end it all. So I even if you've never suffered depression before, it could still sneak up on you? Yeah, even if you've never suffered depression before, it could sneak up on you. And I mean, think about uh, of a teenager who has experienced a death. Mm. Right. Yeah. Unexpectedly, they lose both parents. Are there any uh, medical indicators, such as a blood test or anything, that could predict someone who might be suicidal? Uh, there are tools, screening tools, that most hospitals use or most professionals use. Uh, there's one called the Hamilton Anxiety uh, Scale mm -hmm. that they use. It's a series of questions. They ask you questions. It has 14 questions and then you rate yourself and then there's a scoring tool that tells you that you could be anxious or you could be depressed. There are very many different uh, screens. Okay, so for somebody that's feeling suicidal, what, what would you do? What would you tell them? What would you tell them? I would tell them, get help, go to the hospital, talk to someone. There's a helpline, national helpline that they can call but definitely don't be alone. They cannot be left alone. Right. They should be encouraged to seek professional help. And this is real for family members who may have someone in their family that is, that is experiencing this. This is a real condition. They need to take it seriously. It cannot be taken lightly. And some teenagers can say it in passing. I don't wanna live anymore. I don't wanna do this anymore. Right. You know, a parent or a sibling or an adult should take it seriously and engage that teenager. Talk to them, what's going on? What's going on at school? Are you being bullied? Yeah. Are you being harassed through social media? You know, ask valid questions yeah. and be persistent. Don't be judgmental. Yes, sir. Do not be judgmental because when you judge, a person or that teenager can close up and not say anything because they are in some cases already feeling being judged by other, fr other people, right. such as friends or enemies in some instances. Wow. That's some extremely important information. Thank you so much for coming in to share it with us Thank this you. afternoon. And if you would like more information about suicide prevention and Peninsula Regional Medical Center, visit our website, wboc.com, and click on our picture at the top of the page. Awareness is key. We should all be more aware of the state of our health. After the break, we hear from Captain Willie a year and a half after his heart attack, how he's feeling, some of the side effects he's now living with, and what he has in the works here at WBOC. We've also got some great country music in the works today. A little bit later on, Sarah Ann Garrison takes the Delmarva Life stage. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back. <laughs> 